Hey everyone, today I'll be going over the polychain plunder. So I'll be covering what the polychain is and what the heck just happened. So taking a look at the polychain site, the first thing they write is they want to realize blockchain interoperability and build the next generation of internet. And taking a look at their white paper, down on paragraph 3, this is where I'll be focusing on. So they write, in order to build a better next generation internet infrastructure, we have launched a new cross-chain technology, the Poly Network. Poly Network is based on the sidechain slash relay mode and adopts a two-layer architecture. It employs the polychain as a cross-chain coordinator, multiple homogeneous chains as cross-chain transaction executors, and relayer as a cross-chain information porter. By resolving issues such as trust, security, and transaction issues of chain data, we have realized a safe easy to use and efficient cross-chain system. But moving on, on their site, they offer a bridge, which is closed for obvious reasons at the moment. So the way it works, starting at number one, you send a cross-chain transaction, that gets confirmed on the source chain. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, BSC, whatever network, that gets confirmed, then goes through a relayer to the polychain network. Then the polychain network gets the original transaction from the source chain. Next, it syncs up the block header, of the polychain, sends it to the destination chain, and the polychain relayer transfers the transaction and proof to the destination chain. And finally, on the destination chain, the transaction is validated, and you now have access to whatever you just sent from the source chain, went through the polychain, and now is on the destination chain. So on one of their recent blog posts, we can see all the chains supported here. So we've got Elrond, Ontology, Neo, Echo, BSC, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Zilliqa, and Cosmos. So starting out at 9.55 a.m. and 44 seconds on the 10th of August UTC time, the hacker manages to exploit the bridge on Ethereum, and we can see they took a fair amount of DAI, BTC, USDC, Bay, Wrapped ETH, USDT, REN BTC, SHIB, and UNI tokens. And just under 10 minutes later, bam! He hits the Polygon chain, taking just over 85 million USDC, and just 4 minutes later, BAM! The BSC chain is hit, taking just over 32 million BUSD, just over 1000 Binance BTC, just under 27,000 Binance ETH, and just under 88 million USDC. And 2 hours later, Polychain Network tweets out, Important notice, we are sorry to announce that Polychain Network was attacked on Binance Chain, Ethereum, and Xerox Polygon. Assets have been transferred to the hacker's following addresses, ETH, BSC, and Polygon. We call on miners of affected blockchains and crypto exchanges to blacklist tokens coming from the above addresses, Binance, Huobi, OKX, and Coinbase. And following on a few minutes later, they say we call on miners of affected blockchains and crypto exchanges to blacklist tokens coming from the above addresses. And they mention Tether2, who control the USDT token and CirclePay, who control the USDC token. Following on from that, they say, we will take legal action and we urge the hackers to return the assets. Assets include WBTC, WE, RenBTC, and linked to the hacker's address on the ETH chain. We call on miners of affected blockchains and crypto exchanges to blacklist tokens from the above addresses and mention BitGo and RenBTC Finance. Next, assets involved include DAI, UNI, SHIB, and FEI on the ETH chain, and list the hacker's ETH address. We call on miners of affected blockchains and crypto exchanges to blacklist tokens coming from the above addresses, and mention MakerDAO, Uniswap, SHIB token, and FEI protocol. And within hours, Cointelegraph is on the story, Coindesk is on the story, and Slowmist is on the story. With a great write-up, and just to save time, I won't be going through this, so if you want to read this, pause the video now, and I'll be moving on in 3, 2, 1. And the next day, August the 11th, the Poly Network sends out a plea saying, Dear Hacker, we are the Poly Network team. We want to establish communication with you and urge you to return the hacked assets. The amount of money you hacked is the biggest in DeFi history. Law enforcement in any country will regard this as a major economic crime and you will be pursued. It is very unwise for you to do any further transactions. The money you stole are from tens of thousands of crypto community members, hence the people. You should talk to us to work out a solution. Poly Network Team. And just over 12 hours later, the Poly Network Twitter account tweets out a page 
with an Ethereum hash with a message to the hacker saying we are preparing a multi-sig address controlled by known poly addresses. Hope you will transfer assets to the addresses below and listing the ETH, BSC and Polygon chains. And the Poly Network tweets out a message saying you are moving things to the right direction. We received 1 plus million USDC on Polygon. Did you ask us to encrypt the receiving address with your bookkeeper public key? And following on the next day, the Poly Network tweets out $260 million of assets had been returned. 3.3 million on Ethereum, 256 million from BSC, and 1 million from Polygon. The remaining 269 million on Ethereum and 84 million on Polygon. And later in the day, we get an update that the hacker has returned everything from Polygon, a few million more from BSC and a couple of million from Ethereum. And the remaining 268 million is on Ethereum. And of course, Cointelegraph is quick on the buck and even brings up how the hacker started and ask me anything on how it went down. Only in crypto, am I right? And part one of three, the hacker starts with why hacking and answers with for fun. Why poly network? Cross chain hacking is hot. Why transferring tokens to keep it safe? And what I gather from this part is that he's basically saying, hey, I'm a good guy. I'm just taking the assets from you to keep it safe from other hackers who might not return it. Next, why so sophisticated? The poly network is a decent system. It's one of the most challenging attacks a hacker can enjoy and I had to be quick to beat any insiders or hackers. I took it as a bonus chow. Are you exposed? No, never. I understood the risk of exposing myself, even if I don't do evil. So I used temporary email, IP, or so-called fingerprint, which were untraceable. I prefer to stay in the dark and save the world. What a nice guy. Part two of three. What really happened 30 hours ago? Answer, long story. Believe it or not, I was forced to play the game. The Poly Network is a sophisticated system. I didn't manage to build a local testing environment. I failed to produce a POC, proven concept, at the beginning. However, the aha moment came just before I was to give up. After debugging all night, I crafted a single message to the Ontology Network. I was planning to launch a cool Blitzkrieg to take over the four networks, ETH, BSC, Polygon, and HECO. However, the HECO network goes wrong. The relayer does not behave like the others. A keeper just relayed my exploit directly, and the key was updated to some wrong parameters. It ruined my plan. I should have stopped at that moment, but I decided to let the show go on. What if they patched the bug secretly without any notification? However, I didn't want to cause real panic of the crypto world, so I chose to ignore shitcoins so people didn't have to worry about them going to zero. I took important tokens, except for SHIB, and didn't sell any of them. Then why selling slash swapping the stables? I was pissed by the poly team for their initial response. They urged others to blame and hate me before I had any chance to reply. Of course, I knew there are fake DeFi coins, but I didn't take it seriously since I had no plan laundering them. In the meanwhile, depositing the stables could earn some interest to cover potential cost so that I have more time to negotiate with the poly team. And finally, part three of three, why tipping 13.37? I felt warmth the Ethereum community. And he's obviously referring to Leet Speak here. Continuing on. I was busy investigating issues from Hecko and debugging my scripts. I thought it were networking issues why I could not deposit. I was behind the sophisticated proxy. So I shared my goodwill, the guy. Why asking Tornado and Dow? Having witnessed so many hackings, I knew depositing into Tornado is a wise but desperate decision. It was against my original intention, being the crowdsourced hacker was just my bad joke after meeting so many beggars. Why returning? That's always the plan. I am not very interested in money. I know it hurts when people are attacked, but shouldn't they learn something from those hacks? I announced the returning decision before midnight, so people who had faith in me should have a good rest. Why returning slowly? I do need time to talk with the poly team. It's the only way I know to prove my dignity while hiding my identity. And I need some rest. The Poly Team. I already started talking with them briefly. The logs are on Ethereum. I may or may not publish them. The pains they have suffered is temporary but memorable. I would like to give them tips on how to secure their network so that they can be eligible to manage the billion project in the future. 
The Poly Network is a well-designed system and it will handle more assets. They have got a lot of followers on Twitter, right? After the AMA, Poly Network tweets out, It is undeniable that we are going through a tough period, but we still want to remind all Poly users and projects that our primary goal now is to fully recover the user assets. The team has been working hard to achieve this goal all time since this incident happened. We look forward to Mr. White Hat returning all the remaining user assets as stated by him, and we will continue to work hard to achieve this goal signed the Poly Network team. And about 13 hours ago, the Poly Network team tweets out all the remaining user assets on Ethereum, except the frozen USDT, had been transferred to the multi-sig wallet, controlled by Mr. Whitehat and the Poly team. The repayment process has not been completed. To ensure the safe recovery of user assets, we hope to maintain communication with Mr. Whitehat and convey accurate information to the public. Any unfounded allegations and speculation may damage the extremely important process of asset recovery. To achieve the goal of full recovery of both assets and cross-chain services, the team will continue to communicate with Mr. White Hat actively to receive the final key. Signed, the Poly Network team. And as of the 13th of August, we can see that Mr. White Hat still has 33 million USDT tokens in their Ethereum wallet, which is obviously frozen at the moment and a whole bunch of shitcoins. On the BSC side, it's been all sent back, just a bunch of shitcoins now. And of course on Polygon, everything's been returned as well, just a few random tokens that people sent in. And if you do want to keep up with the evolving story, I'd keep an eye on Cointelegraph or Coindesk and follow the Poly Network team on Twitter. If you like that video, consider leaving a like. If you want to have a chat, why not join my Discord server below. Okay, thanks, bye.